Alexander, you've got an extraordinary um, something very dynamic and systems oriented going on in your background. Uh, so introducing Alexander, um, he is uh, one of the sons of um, Irvin and Carita Laszlo. He's president of the Bertel Amphi Centre uh, for the Study of Systems Science. And those of you who know your system science will know that Ludwig von Bertel Amphi was a very early pioneer, if not the inventor of the systems approach. And I would be corrected by uh, Alexander if I've got that wrong. Uh, he's the research director of the Lasgo Institute for New Paradigm Research, founding director of the Social Systems Foundation and co-founder of Global Education Future. So he's quite busy. Um, and he's professor of systems science and curated emergence and author of over 100 journal book and encyclopedia publications. So he's up in the productivity uh, output um, with his dad. Um, and so it's a, it's a pleasure to welcome you here, Alexander. And you're you're going to be um, speaking um, about a matter of worth and the science of accomplishment, which you'll explain to us what that actually means. Thank you. Thanks so much, David. Yes, what a pleasure, what a joy it is to be here. And I'm going to take a uh, a cue from Arabella and uh, change a bit the title and the focus. What we've just heard, uh, David, you know, as we were listening to both Tarabella and Anna, there's such a sense of deliciousness. You know, I, I'm just struck by how we are here exploring the great upshift. This book that you and that you, David, and and Irvin have have, have pulled together, and this upshift in consciousness, it is tangibly here. In what we've just heard from Anna and what we just heard from uh, Arabella before, it, it, and indeed yesterday as well, but I think particularly Arabella and Anna have captured a kind of a, a sense of being in this, this upshift of consciousness. You know, and for me, it's so much beyond just this consciousness somehow that is an intellectual matter. It is it is this intuition that Anna was talking about. It is the beauty that Arabella was talking about. Indeed, Ariel, in one of her comments uh, here in the chat, well, when she was writing about what uh, she felt that uh, Anna was saying, she was saying that you were like a diamond sparkling in your deep beauty and scintillating insights. This is what I feel is here also. This is a delicious moment, and I'm so glad to be a part of it uh, in, in, in exploring with you. So in... What I would like to do is maybe change a little bit the focus uh, from uh, from what you mentioned. I don't even remember the title there. I would like to have I would like to retitle it uh, "Get the Balance Right" with a nod to Depeche Mode, uh, because I think this is really what we are what what I'm hearing here. There's this there's this balance that we're living into in this great upshift. Uh, and that balance involves a kind of yin-yanging, but at the same time understanding, as Jude Curvin said yesterday, that there's only a unitive narrative, that there's, there's this a, a oneness. But it is also, as was expressed, it is not a monolithic unity. Uh, it is not a unity um, with uh, without uniformity. It, it is it is a it is a kind of uh, unity that brings together, enfolds, embraces, but does not uh, emphasize uh, uniformity. In the same way, diversity, you know, the expression unity and diversity, it's, it's the kind of diversity that we're hearing here as well that includes um, the full spectrum of humanity. What I like to talk about as full spectrum humaning. How do we human well? And um, I think that uh, that this is the, the the framing that I'm hearing here, both from Anna and from uh, Arabella, in terms of this balance of being human. You know, we are right now at this uh, particular point in the in the in the calendar where we're going through the transition from at least the Gregorian calendar. Yes, we're going from. 
2023 to 2024. And I'm speaking to you from the Southern Hemisphere. I'm here in Buenos Aires, Argentina, where it, we're in the throes of summer. It's quite hot here. And, and it's nice that uh, Ana is in, in Lugano and, and Arabella is in Paris. And so we are in this diversity, in this spread, going through these transitions together. It is one planet with different worlds. And in the same way, we are this multitude of human beings with all these different perspectives, but it is one universe. It's one cosmos. So maybe there is a multiverse, but we're in this universe. And in this flow, in this flow, this dance of being and becoming, I think that is the aesthetic that I would like to address in particular, just queuing off what Annabella and uh, Anna were talking about. So, so this idea of being in this transition time, as you pointed out at the very beginning, David, right? Uh, the great upshift, this transition time, is also in a kind of fractal way, the time that we're living in right now, because there's a time of the season. We are shifting from, from one year to the next. And this dance of, 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 of rhythm, of changes is one that we're always caught up in. And I think part of the issue is that at least in the Western mind, we want to stop that dance and we want to freeze it and we want to control it and we want to have certainty at any given point. But it is the beauty of that dance, of the flux and flow, this movement from what David Bohm writes about from the implicate order to the explicate order. And indeed what Bohm and, and Carl Pribram uh, express as the holo flux, which is also the holo movement, which is also celebrated in our uh, book. Um, and uh, Emmanuel Kunzelman and others are talking about this holo movement. It comes from this notion of the holo flux, this movement from the implicate to the explicit order, this, this movement from potential to manifest being, from the Akashic field to the uh, manifest uh, expression of our mundane uh, physical realities. So this aspect of being always in this holo flux, this dance for this ebb and flow, the wax and waning of the moon, waxing and waning, yes, the, the inhaling and exhaling, this is always our natural being. But our being isn't one fixed being. It is a flow state. It is a flow state. This is what Anna talks about as Sinton. This flow state is truly one that is not a pre-recorded symphony or a pre-written uh, opera, but it is this improvisational jam session that the universe is always playing. How do we tune into this? Right? And this is, I think the path in is exactly what Anna has identified as through intuition, through really paying attention to that, that capacity. How do we do this well? We do this by doing what Arabella was saying, heightening our evolutionary aesthetic sense, this evolutionary aesthetics. This is the art science, one word, art science of interbeing, because our interbeing is continually formed by the deeper patterns of the universe, this implicate order, the Akashic field, however you want it, the zero point energy field. There are many ways of expressing this field of potential that we flow through, that flows through us. And this, I think, is the key. How do we do that? Arabella touched on it by, by, by referring to the capacity for sensing into beauty, and this is exactly what Anna was talking about as well, this intuition, right? This sense ability. So when we talk about the upshift in consciousness, we're also talking about a heightening of our sentient capacity, our sense ability. And how do we do this? Well, to make ourselves available to this flow, to this dance, is, I think, perhaps the key thing. Um, uh, I was once part of a 
uh, workshop with a a shaman, a, a woman from um, the the Gari tribe of Burkina Faso in West Africa, and and uh, she asked, "Why are you here?" And I I said that I was there to try to learn how to dance. I wanted to learn the dance that the cosmos is doing, that the universe is doing. Um, this is what Arabella talked about also in the beauty of seeing, for example, the murmuration of starlings in the evening when they move as one big amoeba in the sky almost. It's just one being it looks like. How do they do that? You know, humans don't do that. When, when we fly with our airplanes, we have to have an air traffic controller saying, <laughs> careful to your left of the plane. Or, and then when we're on the road, we have to have somebody, you know, turn on your blinker. You know, why didn't you turn on your blinker? But the birds don't have to blink. They don't have to say, I'm going to go left now. They fly together as one. They have this capacity for syntony that Anna has talked about. This ability to naturally, intuitively flow with their moments. And I think this is what we have, all of us, the capacity to do, just as well as the birds do. But because of our over-reliance on technology, something that Kingsley Dennis touched on yesterday as well, and our, our we become uh, technology dependent or um, app dependent. You know, there's these terms in sociology now about being app dependent or app enabled or the zombification of people who have their, their, their cell phones and they can't take their eyes away from that. So how do we re-immerse ourselves in the beauty of the flows. How do we learn how to dance? You know, at the end of that seminar with, uh, or that, that workshop with the, with the shaman, I had changed my view and that my objective was no longer to learn how to dance, this dance that the cosmos is doing, but I wanted to learn how to be danced. You know, that's, it's, it's a big difference. It's just a little difference of expression. To learn how to dance means trying to dance, and you're you're doing the dance and you're following steps. That's learning the dance. But being danced is allowing it to flow through you. This is exactly what Anna was talking about when she touched on the ineffable, right? The things you cannot put into words. And indeed, if we try to put them into words, we take away that divine aspect, that sacredness. This is what uh, Arabella was also talking about. You, you can't bottle beauty. You can't take it into the laboratory and say, here's the beauty, let's dissect it. You will kill it in the process. So being able to be the expressions of the ineffable, right? That for me is part of being dance, this sacred dance. You can't dissect divinity. And the wording of this is very important. So everything that both Arabella and Anna were saying was poetic. Their way of expressing themselves was, is beautiful. It was delicious just to listen to. And I think this is part of how we can show up in the world. This is the upshift in consciousness, this way of being the dance, being danced by the moment. This, the physicists will talk about entanglement, quantum entanglement. And I think it's a very appropriate term for physics, for the level of the quantum. But I don't want to talk about the entanglement of people. Entanglement is what happens to my beard in the morning, and I need to straighten it out. I want to talk about intertwinglement. And this isn't even a word I came up with. This is from Theodore Holmes Nelson from 1974. He wrote about intertwinglement. Isn't that a beautiful oh, word? It's delicious. It's magical. We are intertwingled, not entangled. It's the same concept, but paying attention to how we express ourselves. There's the aesthetic that Arabella was talking about. Very, very important. And finally, maybe I want to just uh, touch on this last point and then and we can move to our panel. This comes also to something that, that uh, I was uh, inspired by what Anna was saying. Um, you know, the uh, 14th century Persian poet um, Hafiz uh, has this beautiful expression. He says, um, I am the whole on the flute through which God's breath blows. Another way of expressing it, I am the whole on the flute through which the universe flows. It's wonderful. But if you notice, he didn't say, I am the instrument of God. That's, that's a certain hubris, a certain like, I'm, I'm even, the, 
there's a humbleness to it, but still, I am, I am the whole on the flute, the empty space, the field of potential, that possibility that arises in the allowance for the universe to express itself through you, to be that vehicle for the ineffable. How can we do that? Through tapping that power of intuition that Anna was talking about, through harmonizing, syntonizing, through listening. You know, there's this, there's this idea from last century about having the keynote speakers. In this century, we need keynote listeners, <laughs> keynote listeners, the ability to really hear what is emerging all around us and tune into, really like as a human tuning fork, to tune into that vibrational, that delicious aesthetic that, as uh, Arabella was putting, that even that orgasmic and erotic aspect of expression of ecstasy of life. Now, does that mean that we should turn a blind eye to the pain, to all the destruction that is going on in the world? No, of course not. But it means what we tune into and how we ourselves our expression of the vibrational frequency that augments life, that feeds life, that creates possible futures, that is key. And one very key way of doing that is immersing ourselves in nature. Nature, ha, again, that's where the biggest um, jazz ensemble is all the time being played. And when we listen into that, then we can be in, in symphony. So back to you, David. Thank you. Fantastic, uh, Alexander. Thank you so much. Intertwingled. I think we well, none of us will forget that, but it made me think maybe another way of putting this would be intertwinkled, you know, like 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 stars intertwinkled, um, intertwinkled. 